So today we're going to be talking about Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and honestly, this video took a little while to make because I still don't know how I feel about this game. I put a decent amount of time on the beta, and honestly, you know, if you want my quick opinion, I think Wildlands is a significantly better game. And so the first thing I want to talk about before we even get into, like, the main parts of the game is the character customization. Not, not the gameplay, I'll talk about the character customization first, that's where we're going to start. That was honestly my favorite part of Wildlands. Not the face customizer that I'll show here that they have, which is just as unimpressive as every other Ubisoft game, whether it's The Division or the first Wildlands or this, the facial stuff never really does anything for me. But it's the actual clothes you can change, you know, the shirt, the pants, the vest, the hat, the goggles, the, the headwear, the backpack, you know, you could change so much in Wildlands. And in this, it's all in the gear system, right? And I'll talk about more about that gear system later. But, you know, when I used to play Wildlands, I'd get on, and we'd all sit there for 45 minutes, just customizing our characters. You know, you could look any way you wanted, and now it's all gear-based, all stat-based. So let's talk about that actual gear and stat-based system. So if we break it down, basically, it's like any of your other looter shooter games, and you know how I feel about looter shooter games the million times I've talked about Anthem, but the initial problem with this is the fact that in Wildlands, there were set specific locations for each gun. The SCAR is here, the M4 is here, the AK is here, the G36C is here, the MP5 is here. You go around, you look for these guns, and they're in the same spot every time, but, you know, you're not going to find them until you get into a certain progression point into the game. Well, the problem here, just gun, not even gear, you know, armor-based, whatever, just guns, is you could find an M4, you know, the first box you open. And then you could find an M4 in the last box you open. And the only difference is the numbers. And in a game like this, in a game like a realistic shooter like Wildlands, that doesn't make sense to me. That's not how it should be. There should be one M4, one AK, one SKS, one Barrett 50, you know, one of each gun. I shouldn't have 19 M249s, and each one's just a different level. That just throws me off. I don't think, you know, where's the fun in discovering guns, right? Another problem is if I want to wear a helmet, you know, but the hat has higher stats, you gotta wear the hat. You know, you don't really get a choice in what you want to wear. You kind of have to just go with what the game gives you as higher stats. Another problem with that whole stat-based system is I did not play this game for very long. I maybe played for four hours, if that. And I got duplicates. Twice, maybe three times, I got duplicates of just the same item, but one level higher. If four hours into the game you're having that problem, I don't know how long this game is, but the first Wildlands took me three months to beat. So if this game goes on for three months, and, you know, I get a duplicate every four hours, that, that's going to be a problem. That's going to get boring really fast. So overall, just this gear and stat-based system doesn't work in a game like this, and something like Destiny or... Anthem, if the gear is cool, theoretically, it should work. But, you know, Anthem is an exception from that. But, in something like this, it just it just doesn't work. They should have stuck with the old system. But let's talk about the actual gameplay of the game. You know, what people, what people buy the game for. Now, like I said, it took me three months to beat Ghost Recon Wildlands. The, the first, you know, game in this franchise, sequel, whatever you want to call it. And... Within those three months, you know, there was never a point where I was like, alright, this game is boring, I'm done, you know? I mean, obviously, there was points where I played it for, like, four weeks straight, and I was like, alright, I, I need a break from this, but that's with every game, it doesn't matter how good it is, right? But, with Breakpoint, you've all seen the, the beginning with the helicopter crashes. I couldn't even get through that sequence. It took me two, like, sit-throughs of me playing the game, to actually complete that helicopter whole first 20-30 minute sequence. It was just so... I was so bored. You know, with Wildlands, I just felt that the gunplay was stronger. And I mean, I can't pinpoint exactly what it is, you know. It feels similar. I mean, a couple of, you know, just random problems I have. The character is too in the center of the screen. The camera's too close to the character. You know, but stuff like that shouldn't matter with the overall just, you know, first first impressions very beginning of the game. 
And I thought it was weird that I just got bored so fast. There was no point where I wanted to go explore all of the question marks. You know, I'm one of those people that I play Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I play Wildlands. I'm 100%ing the game, right? Getting every collectible, getting every document, just everything. And with this game, I didn't even feel like going to the main mission. Like, I was just so bored. Like, there was nothing interesting. Even the combat, and I was... On one of the higher difficulties, even the combat was either so, like, buggy and random, or it was just easy, you know? And I feel like another problem with the combat system is they had this thing in Wildlands where, in, when you're not detected, you shoot somebody once, you shoot somebody twice, and they go down. And then when you get detected, they take more bullets. And I feel like this game kind of pushed that even further. It takes probably 8 to 10 bullets once you're detected, depending on the gun, obviously, to get to kill somebody. And I'm not saying it should be one bullet at all times. I understand the balancing reasons for that. Maybe you lower that from 8 to 10 bullets down to like 5. It just kind of throws off the balance of one tapping people to having to put 10 bullets in somebody. And just like stuff like that that makes it sluggish. And the whole the drones thing, like a random drone just flying over you and, and spotting you when you just go around, you know, peacefully collecting items, you know, just exploring, that can get very annoying. The AI isn't all that great, if we're being honest. I mean, I probably got within 10 meters, you know, prone. It's not as bad as Wildlands, where you could, you could like, like, crawl on their foot prone, and they wouldn't notice you. But... You can get pretty close prone, not even using the camo system, just, just crawling all up on them. They really won't notice anything. And honestly, I was just kind of surprised. You know, all of the videos out there, all the other YouTubers, all just everyone who's played this game has said they really like it and say that it's great. Even, you know, some of the people that I watch have been watching for years that usually say games aren't great, you know? They they said this game is really good, it's a huge improvement on Wildlands, and I don't see that in any way. Other than the cutscenes, which we'll talk about, which, you know, the cutscenes don't make a game. The cutscenes is pretty much the only improvement I see on this game. I mean, it was so buggy, was my problem. Just in small stuff, too. Stuff like the whole, if you shoot in full auto, it makes a different sound than if you shoot semi-auto. I mean... Not without a suppressor, with a suppressor, you know, it shouldn't, the sound shouldn't matter. And it might be because I came straight off of Modern Warfare. There's a gunplay felt so weird. This was the first shooter that I played after Modern Warfare. So that might have put this game in a huge, a huge hole right off the bat, right? So Modern Warfare feels great, it sounds great, but this game. You know, I don't know, I had to go back and play the first Wildlands again for a while, but there was at no point where I felt the gunplay felt fake. I felt like the gunplay felt and sounded really good in Wildlands, but in Breakpoint, I, I don't feel like the guns are punchy. You know, I'm shooting these big guns, M4s, LMGs, and at no point do I feel like my characters, you know, having, struggling to, you know, withhold the recoil, He's kind of just, just shooting, oh, and there's no impact to the shots, you know, the, the animations for enemies going down is fine, but it just doesn't have, have power and depth to the actual shots you take. And that's just one of my bigger problems with a realistic shooter like Breakpoint. And honestly, that's kind of the biggest letdown of this game. Wildlands was so fun to just go through and clear outposts with your friends and just customize your character and look completely different every time. That's why I loved Wildlands, and they took those two big aspects out of the game. It's not, it's not fun to play the game anymore. You know, the actual gameplay just, just isn't fun. It's, it's boring. And the customization just isn't even there. Now, of course, you know, all of the bugs can be fixed and all of that, but I'm talking about just right now, it wasn't in a state where I felt, you know, the game was solid. I mean, this is one of the big examples in a, in a single-player experience, just playing the, the single-player story mode, that I felt the bugs actually pulled you out of a game, you know, kind of like clipping through an object, that kind of stuff, you know, it's fine, you know, you laugh at it and move on. 
but just the gunshot sound, all the glitches with the guns, enemies being invisible, all that kind of stuff, it just pulls you out of the game. And talking about the whole single player experience, I didn't even touch multiplayer, right? I played multiplayer in its beta state in Wildlands, and I played it when it fully released in Wildlands, and at no point was I, you know, super impressed. In Wildlands, it was literally, it was just sniper heaven. It was like playing sniper elite multiplayer. It was just sniping each other from across the map. That's really all it was. You know, I didn't think it was anything interesting. It was fine. It was whatever. And, you know, I don't think it's going to be any better than this. I've seen gameplay of it, and it looks the same way. It looks fine. There's no, you know, huge improvements to where I'm like, oh yeah, I should play that. It just, it, lo it looks okay. You know, your progression carries over in the multiplayer, and if it's, there's no limits on that, if there's no... You know, they don't put you with players with similar stats. That's definitely a balancing issue. But just overall, this game feels like a downgrade from this Wildlands. And you know, I say that for many oh, reasons. God. Mainly the two things I just talked about. But also, like, the map size is significantly small. Now, I'm not saying we need a ghost recon Wildlands size map. That map is ridiculously big. But I'm not saying we need a map that sized. But, you know, unless there's just something that I was missing, you know, maybe this it's not to the same Walker. scale as Wildlands, but the map seemed tiny in this game. I mean, I played for, like I said, four hours, and I went through like three regions in that time. And, you know, I just, the map seemed tiny. It seemed like you would could go through it way faster. And I was really surprised when they announced this game, because Wildlands didn't come out that long ago. I know to some of you, it might seem like... It came out a hot minute ago, but it hasn't it hasn't been, you know, the time I thought would be adequate to make another one of these games. I thought it was gonna be a while before we got another one of these. But I mean, they released it and of course, you know, if the story's great that could, you know, give the game points here or there. But honestly with something like this, I think it's all about the gameplay and I think you know, with what I've seen so far, the gameplay just isn't there. They added this whole drone component, RPG element, all this stuff they added was to try to appeal to the whole, you know, looter shooter RPG thing that's going on right now. And if you can do it, do it. I mean, they're doing great with Assassin's Creed. But with this, it just didn't work. And one last thing I want to address, just a, just a fun fact. Whoever said that the vehicles control better in this game? Man, I don't know what fucking drugs you were on, dog. But did you play the last game? Like, okay. As far as vehicle controls go, there's Ghost Recon Wildlands, Watch Dogs 2, and Watch Dogs 1. Okay. Watch Dogs 2 and Ghost Recon Wildlands are, are on acceptable levels. Okay. Then there's Watch Dogs 1, which is like j just on the line of like, I can't play this game with the driving, right? I didn't have a problem when I first played it, but going back and playing it, those controls are ass. Then there's this game, which has what I call the Just Cause problem, right? Okay, so the problem here is one, the controls are fucking ass in the vehicles, right? They say that the controls are better, they're more, they're more defined, they give you more control. And, you know, I don't have a lot of gameplay mean vehicles because they have such a pain in the ass to drive. But they say you have more control, right? The way they gave you more control was by taking the top speed of the vehicles and cutting them in half. Now, maybe they did that to make their map seem bigger. You know, if you were going as fast as you were in Wildlands, you get across the map too fast, and they don't want that. They want their map to seem big. So they slow down the vehicles. But just slowing down the vehicles doesn't fix the control problems. And then the just cause, you know, problem that I was talking about is every car weighs like nine billion pounds you know you drive over a cliff and it's like there's a freaking anchor weight tied to the bottom of your car you immediately shoot straight down there's no no trajectory there's no angle of descent you just go straight down and immediately are pulled towards the ground and you know it's not a car game it's not a driving game but you know when people say that the driving has improved I'm sure in some ways it's improved but it's not any better. The, the flying isn't any better. The flying is is fine though. I would never had really a huge problem with the flying. It's just the, the vehicles are a pain in the ass. And so if we're kind of summing up everything here, the gunplay itself is just boring along with the bugs kind of make it less and less immersive. 
as far as bugs go in general, there's just a lot of, you know, quality of life bugs, visible enemies, gun sounds not, you know, firing off, just, just stuff like that. Vehicle controls suck. The, the skill tree is, is iffy at, at best. You know, I felt like there were a lot of skills on there that were like, they wanted to make their skill tree big. And that's why they're on there. There's just stuff that doesn't need to be on there. There are some useful ones, like, but, like, stuff like night vision goggles, I feel like doesn't need to be on a skill tree. That's just something you should have. On a t side tangent here, the, the night vision looks fucking awful in this game compared to the last game, which I don't know how you do that. You can just copy and paste, but whatever. Um, the, the customization is absolutely terrible, what they did. The customization, the, the gear system is kind of garbage really the only thing i like in this game is the facial graphics are significantly better right if you go look at like early early e3 shit right and look at the helicopter crash scenes the the facial just animations and and just textures looked garbage like i was worried about it even in like the early early beta stuff it looked pretty bad but now it's it's better it's not you know red dead level but it's a lot better and the whole rpg stuff they added the bivouac system and all of that stuff you know it's got some interesting stuff like you can kind of mess with your guns to get better accuracy and you can eat to have better stamina i think that's all interesting but it's not done well enough to the point where i would ever use any of that right the the enemy difficulty on the highest difficulty isn't really that hard to where I need to be, you know, eating to gain buff. It's not like Monster Hunter, where I gotta sit here and eat food just to survive, you know what I mean? Mayday. It's nothing Mayday. difficult. They should have Skull added fleet. more There's to the whole read. food eating system, five, maybe, five, you know, I'm gonna say have like Who a hunger this? and thirst gauge, but that'll piss people off. And then along with the Let's whole survival so mechanics that they kind of marketed this game towards with the whole you roll down a hill and you gotta, you gotta bandage clean. yourself and Give you drink the water right. to keep your stamina up. There were two opposite extremes they had, you know, not included at all, and just keep it the way it was, or go extreme with it, to the point where the old fans, the casual fans of the game, wouldn't have enjoyed it at all, right? I would have been fine with that extreme, right? You know, you roll down a hill, you guy breaks his leg, you can't run until you get back to like a bivouac, or, you know, you gotta bandage up a whole bunch, or something like that, but really, the only kind of survival... Thing in this game is just falling down a hill right and let me tell you, you I say that but falling down a hill is so easy and so obnoxious like you know when you're playing GTA and your guy just starts falling down a hill and he keeps falling and falling and falling that's kind of how this game is I feel like for for special ghost operatives you sure do fall down hills a lot. Like, I don't know if they just don't train you in that. You know, they're better in the water, I guess. But you, you fall a lot in this game, and it's quite annoying. You know, I feel like they could have had a better balance of just the whole survival mechanics in general. And honestly, you know, this, this video is getting quite long. I didn't mean to rant about it this long. But I was just really disappointed with how this game went. I was a huge fan of Wildlands. And I like stealth shooters like this, and you know, you can play on such a huge stealthful kind of team tactics basis in Wildlands that, you know, in this game, just it's not it's not fun to do. And that kind of boils down to what makes these Ghost Recon games in the recent years. This huge open world and outpost. You gotta have fun with the the approach you have. If you're one of those people just likes to dick around and freaking jump out of a helicopter into the base with your LMG and shoot people. You can kind of have fun like that in any game. You can make your own fun. And look at Sea of Thieves. You can make whatever fun you want, right? You can, If you can make your fun, you'll love any game. But if you're somebody who you need, you know, core, solid gameplay mechanics in order to play and have that stealthful realistic experience that you want from a game like this, I don't think it's there as much as it was there in Wildlands. But that's what I think about this game so far. You guys, let me know what you think. Subscribe, follow me on Twitter, comment, losing my freaking voice just filming this one video. Some of my shit broke, so it might be a hot minute before there's another video, but I'll update on that more on Twitter probably. 
and I'll see you guys on the next one.